In this video, we're going to take a look at actually painting on our 3D models right inside Cinema 4D. We're going to use the body paint module that allows us to actually paint in 3D right on top of our models. And we're going to look at different methods, including projection painting, to cover up seams and how we can paint with both colors and images as textures for our objects. So I'm going to start here. When you click on Layout, you have a few different options. We'll start in Body Paint UV Edit Mode and just describe uh, kind of what's going on here. So let's say for this exercise, I want to paint the body of the dinosaur, so just the mesh here. And so here is the T-Rex body mesh. And if I come over here, you'll notice that there's nothing showing up in my UV canvas. And so this is where our 2D uh, UVs, which are the, uh, the textural plane for our 3D models, will be placed. And so if I come in here and say show UV, that will actually show the UV mesh of this dinosaur. So you can see that I have unwrapped it. And of course, in doing so, I've created several seams that can often be a problem when we're painting. So we're going, to we're going to address that here in just a little bit. But for right now, let's take a look at how we start uh, creating a new texture. So we're going to create a new material. And you'll notice that, depending on the layout, you'll have different options. So in Body Paint UV Edit Mode, I have my Object Manager Materials, but it's going to look different than our typical Material Manager. And I have Colors. So this will show me not only color information as far as like things like color picker and color swatches, it'll also show things like color channels, different channels that may be active, like the bump channel, diffuse channel, reflection channel, etc. And then also um, some blending options as well. So keep in mind that we're going to flip through a couple of different views as we go through painting. And so a lot of these are just going to be reorganized, but are typically all going to be accessible within each one of the body paint layouts. So here we have layers, we have the UV mapping commands, uh, we have a separate exercise where we talk about UV mapping. But here we'll deal with multiple layers, painting in layers, our brushes, and Cinema 4D comes loaded with lots of great um, uh, uh, preloaded preset brushes. And then, of course, uh, swatches for colors and some image-based texturing. So to start it off, we need to, of course, have um, a new material. So what we're going to do is come up to the uh, Paint Setup Wizard. And this is the same Paint Setup Wizard we would go to if we were going to lay out UVs, if we were actually going to unwrap the UVs. So when I click on the Paint Setup Wizard, the first thing that comes up is it wants me to choose whether I want to select an object or an existing material to work on. <clears throat> In this case, I have no existing material, and so I want to work only on the dinosaur body mesh. So I'm going to press Deselect All, and then just go down and find the T-Rex body mesh, and say Next. Now, I've already got my UVs laid out, so I don't want to recalculate the UVs. That would uh, totally undermine what I've already done and create a new unwrapping of the UVs. Um, I can choose single material mode or, or multiple, multiple materials. So if I wanted to create an individual bump material, uh, an individual, uh, you know, whatever material, color, diffusion map, all that kind of thing. So I'm going to single material mode and I'm going to say next. And here I can determine what channels I want to be painting in. So what materials am I going to create? Uh, and so in this case, I'm just going to work on, keep it simple here, color and bump. And then I can choose uh, width and height. So if I want to dial this in, you'll see minimum, maximum, so it'll be a range between those. Um, let's just say I want to make a 2K texture. If I set that as the min and the max, then I know that's exactly what I'm going to get is a 2K texture. So I'm going to click Finish. 
And so now it's created a new material at a size of 248, 2048 by 2048. So everything is good. And now if I come in, things like layers, I'll have a background layer already established. Um, if I come over to materials, here is this new material. And here's my color and my bump channels. So the first thing about painting is to see what is active. So right now, I have the color channel active. You can see that by the brush being uh, enabled. Whereas in the case of the bump map here, it's grayed out. Um, you can multi-paint, multi-channel paint. So if I click on that, I can paint in both the color and bump channel. And so sometimes you may have to press the shift key to do that. If you just click right on the icon, you should be able to do that without having to shift click. So right now, if I were to paint, I would be painting in both channels at once. And that's oftentimes what you want to do if you're dealing with something like textures, wrinkles, those kind of things. Um, in this case, perhaps scales on the dinosaur. So I'm going to start with just creating kind of a base color for this model. And in doing so, we'll be able to look at some of the tools here. So I don't need the uh, bump channel active at all. I'm just going to come in here to my color channel, press command A, you'll see that the marching ants surround the entire body. And I'm going to come in and use the fill bucket, which will be underneath the gradient tool here. So here you'll see clone stamp. A lot of typical photo editing uh, tools are here. Clone stamp, uh, the brush tool, the eraser tool, the blur tool, sharpen tool, smudge tool, uh, you have burn and dodge, and the sponge tool. You have some basic shapes that you can create, and of course text um, that you can write in here. So a lot of the same things you would see in a, in a photo editor. The eyedropper tool is here as well. And so what I'm going to do with this now is use the fill uh, bitmap option here. So you'll see that's active here in the attribute manager. I've got my selection made, so I need to choose a color. I'm just going to choose um, maybe this color here. And there you go. So now I've filled this background layer with this color. And I'm going to go in to my layers now, and I'm going to start building up my layers. So I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to start just by looking at the typical paintbrush and options that we have here. So, so kind of roll around the view, zoom in. I don't need to have my selection act, um, active, so... I'll just deselect everything by selecting something in the in the empty space of the viewport. And now I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool. So with the paintbrush tool active, I get a few different things. And I'm going to change this now to the 3D paint mode now that we're in here. And we'll jump back and forth because there are some times when you'll want to see your texture. And you can jump back and forth between the viewport and texture mode to paint. Sometimes it's nice to have that, um, both those active at once. But so you'll see here the brush panel is more readily available inside the body paint uh, 3D paint layout. And so again, kind of the typical things you see in uh, image editing software. We have brush size, pressure, hardness, uh, spacing, squeeze so if we want to change um, the profile of the brush uh, options for rotation airbrush and jitter and as I said earlier you have lots of pre -brush, uh, preset brushes that you can choose from and so some of these are just the Maxon standards and then all these great brushes that are provided by different artists who uh, contributed as well so I'm just going to go into these brushes and look around at some of these options. So 
tons of choices here, including some sponge options. And so you can see how that will look. Change the size. And I can begin to choose a color and paint. So I'm going to go again to just to my swatches here and just grab something to start painting. And so now with this I can come in and just begin painting a little bit here. And if I increase spacing, you'll see how that starts to create these different kind of blotchy surfaces. And one thing to go ahead and note is here is one of those seams. So around the neck area here, I have a clear seam. And you can see that right inside my texture view. So right now I'm painting around this seam and that's creating the disconnect uh, between the neck and the head. So I'm just not really too worried about uh, looks just going to paint a little bit more here and so we can kind of see how that's looking I'll color up on its head now one thing you'll notice is the brush on this part of the mesh looks nice and even when I get it to the head where there's all these subdivision levels you'll notice that it gets really big and begins to distort. Um, that's because of the way the UVs are laid out, and it's compatible using projection painting. And so that's one of the reasons that you can use projection painting. We'll look at that in a moment. And the other, of course, is to fix areas like this, this seam that we're struggling with here. So I'm going to say for now that that looks... Just really great. Um, another major seam down the center. And so, just like inside our image editors, if we go in, sorry about that, if we go in and look at our layers. We can change the blend mode. To get different looks. So just as in Photoshop, for example, they're divided up darken uh, options. So multiply color burn linear burn. All these are darken options and different methods. Then we have our lighten options. Then we have our lighting options. And then some difference for some very unique looks. And sometimes it can be a little slow for your um, viewport to update every once in a while. So um, here, I'm just going to set this back uh, to dark. Maybe lower the transparency a little bit. And so one option for fixing 
areas like this uh, seam is to use projection painting. So what projection painting does, and you'll see it right here, it actually projects uh, the painting from the active camera. So if I turn this on, now as I paint, it's painting based on my position away from the shape. So notice that as I move back, the brush is larger and smaller uh, in comparison as I zoom in. So this allows you to use textures and brush sizes to different uses and you'll notice now I can paint right over those seams and when I look at these inside the texture view you'll be able to see this updated as well So again, if I wanted to get um, get rid of the distortion, zoom in here. Uh, notice that now it paints nice and even. It doesn't look at the UVs. It just projection paints from the camera. So it takes care of all those um, shortfalls that I created in my Uneven, uneven topology within the UVs and begins to paint evenly regardless of the geometrical makeup, the subdivision level of here. So here's a good case of this being stretched uh, based on the UVs, but when I come in and paint, it's nice and even. One thing you do have to worry about with this option is areas that are hit non-directly. So you can get stretching if, for example, if I'm painting up here, the areas around the edge of the dinosaur, uh, if they're hit, may not project correctly. So you do have to pay attention to make sure that you're not painting any areas that you don't want hit by the paintbrush. So this may be an example here of where I hit the cheek right below the eye, yes. So here I didn't have, uh, you know, I accidentally hit this area so it stretches because the projection is not straight on. So I can just paint back over that to fix that. Paint a little bit more there. And then at any time, I can do a render. Now, you can do ray brush render view. I'm just going to do a regular full quality render view for this and see how this looks right now. And we'll look at the ray brush render view in another exercise. So here I can kind of see how the paint is being applied to the mesh. You know, still some cleanup to do. But let's jump to talking about the bump channel. So if I wanted to, I could be painting both, as I said, in the color and the bump channel. So if there were a case where, you know, certain aspects, like I mentioned earlier, wrinkles or um, 
uh, pores. I might be painting kind of a darker color into the pores. At the same time, I could be painting a bump map. So some of these, um, materials, and what I'm going to do is go into my, oops, so right now I'm in a uh, projection painting layer, so I need to turn that off, and now I can see my layers back to normal, so I'm going to create a new layer, hide this layer, and maybe set this to a more appropriate color. Or actually, let's look at using a multi-channel brush. So, here's my swatches. One of these is this kind of reptilian-looking uh, skin. And by default, it is a, a multi-channel brush, so it has both color uh, chosen in the uh, color channel and the bump channel. And so you can see it's just a grayscale version, and it will show loading in... Uh, a texture here in just a moment. But so if I go to brushes, uh, right now I'd still be applying this using um, this color using uh, that brush. So I'm going to jump to a uh, more standard style brush and then come back to my colors. So if I click on color, I can see here's the uh, color for my color channel if I was in my bump channel now I can see that here so I can begin again to paint and in this case I am painting both in the color channel and inside the bump channel so if I kind of roll this around you should be able to see the depth within the texture Again, I'll do a quick render of that. So there you can see I'm actually painting into uh, the bump channel at the same time. Keep in mind, I've got multiple layering going on, one within the color channel, one within the bump channel. So if I want to, I'm going to Command Z this, um, you know, I may want to create a new layer to work in. And then depending on what channel I'm selected on here, that's the layer reference that will be pulled up in the layers panel. So again, I can use this. Uh, to paint. Let me show you a problem with this is in these areas where my paintbrush distorts because you can see that is not going to be an attractive uh, paint job there. So I'm going to Command Z that and again go to projection painting and now you can see I can get a more universal scale and so if I want to change this at any time I can zoom in or out and that will change the brush size uh, accordingly. I can also raise the brush size here so I can paint this quicker. I'm just going to do this real quick. Almost looks like a, a stained glass dinosaur at this point. So you get the picture of how this can work. And then again, within the color um, channel layers, once I was done with this, I click on the projection painting to, to stop the projection painting. It will go back to regular layers. And sometimes the preview will, will depending on how much geometry there, it may not show it. 100% accurate, but you can always run renders to see exactly how that looks. 
Um, and again, I could use some of these uh, blend modes to change the way this material is applied in the color channel here anyway. And so now if I rendered this, you're going to see all the detail in this, uh, in this bump map show up on the dinosaur. All right, so lots of good detail. And again, universally applied because we're projection painting rather than um, painting uh, based on the brush size. All right, so what about if you want to load a material? And so what you'd see here is if I roll around, I would have to projection paint from multiple views to get this all situated. And you also notice that I don't have to worry about the seam uh, that's running through the neck here. It's taken care of by the projection painting. And so what if I wanted to paint the underbelly of the dinosaur um, with an existing image? So I would only want to apply this to a certain part of the model, and sometimes it's easy just to select that shape. So just like in image editors, you have selection tools. So here I've got the lasso tool. So let's say I wanted to grab an area kind of like this. Within the selection options, you have new selection, inverse uh, whatever is selected, add to a selection, and subtract from a selection. So here's my selection showing up. We can also feather. So if we want to kind of smooth this in, we could do that. I could create this on another layer as well. That would help with the blending. And so what I'm going to do is with this selection active, I'm going to bring in a material. So in the color channel, um, I'm going to go to color. And I can choose solid color like uh, we started with, or I can choose texture paint, which is basically what this was. Um, in this case, I'm going to say load from disk and choose an image. And I'm going to go to the bump channel and choose that same, oops, choose that same image, even though it's in color. Um, and so now I could use the fill bucket again within this selection and fill paint this area. Now you'll notice because of the seam, I'm having a real hard time with this projection. It doesn't look the way it just naturally puts it on there. Of course, it's not even, it's disconnected. And if I look at my textures here. I can look at the bump channel or the material channel. Probably more evident in the material channel. It's going to be really hard for those to line up. These shapes are kind of all over the place. So what I'm going to do is undo the paint and again kind of line up my camera and choose projection paint and then fill. Oops, lost my selection. So projection paint is enabled and I can fill that area and now it fills it even. The problem is it fills it really large. The texture is a big texture and so it's really close up. It doesn't look the way I want to. So how can we paint or project or fill an area with a texture but use the texture tiled at a smaller or larger size? I'm going to Command Z that. That's answered right here inside the color option within the channel. So right now I'm in the uh, bump channel 
and I'm going to scale this down to let's say 15%. Then I'm going to go to my, oh it was in my color channel, excuse me. So then I'm going to go to my bump channel and do the same thing. 15%. Make sure that projection painting is enabled. And fill bucket again. Now it fills it correctly. See here, it's not a very good tileable texture. I could probably increase this a little bit more. But the main thing to notice is, say, make it 40%. One of the main things to notice, though, is this nice feather effect that's happening here based on the feather value that I've placed here. So you get a nice blend of the material. So once that selection is gone, you get a nice smooth edge. So if I were to go back to my under layer here, so I'm going to get rid of the projection painting, go back to this layer and come back to using um, just grab it from the swatches again so I come back to use this material and begin to paint oops Still have that selection enabled. Deselect all, go back to projection, begin to paint back on the model. And of course, because I'm using layers, I am not painting over the belly area that I just filled, filled in. Some of this is going to be not accurate based on where the camera is located. So I'm going to give it a moment. Paint some more. This is a nice tileable texture, so I, I don't have to worry about um, where I stop and start painting. It's all going to kind of go together nicely because of the way it's set up. Now, the one thing I can do is mess it up via scale, but that's not a big deal. So I'm almost got this part done. I'm going to increase my brush size so I can kind of knock all this out quickly. Voila. A little bit thick on the tail there. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yep, still a little bit thick. Clean it up here. And yeah, it's a little bit better. There we go. And then paint down here on the feet. Find a little size variation. And so here you can see again the projection needs to be adjusted uh, where the side projection I was doing doesn't match up well to the edges there so I can paint through that and I'm not going to paint this entire thing let me just finish this one little section here and then we'll move on to a couple other options there 
So one thing I did not take into consideration was my bump channel. So I'm not working on a separate layer of my bump channel. So if I want to make sure that I don't lose the bump here and I have a little bit on the side, that's okay. Um, I would need to go into my bump channel layers, create a new layer and put that below Oops, not as a child of. Put it below that layer. Now I can, oops, turn back on projection paint. Let me roll below here. And now I, on both the bump and color, I no longer have to worry about painting over my existing material. I'm just going to paint a little bit more up here and then we can take a look at a couple more options within here. All right, good enough for now. And so just like in um, your other uh, image editors, you can do other kinds of adjustments to the layers. So I'm going to end the projection painting and go into my color channel. And so I've got the belly on the one. So if I wanted to drastically change this color, for example, I could add another layer. So I create my layer in the color channel. I make sure it's active and make sure the bump channel is not active. Um, I can use the select all and use the paint, the fill bucket. Again, choose a swatch that I want to paint with and then fill that layer and then I can use different options for how to blend that in So you really have a lot of the same flexibility that you have in your other uh, image editing softwares that allow you to come right inside of Cinema 4D, paint, and do all the image editing you need to do right inside Cinema 4D without the need to jump into Photoshop or some other image editing software. Um, sometimes you will find that um, it may be better to jump into something like Photoshop and I'll certainly show you how you can do that. It's very simple. So you can at any time if there's something that you want to accomplish inside Photoshop for example you can save this texture, open it in Photoshop, make your edits and then bounce it right back into Cinema 4D and it of course will all update and work seamlessly together. So if I wanted to save these, number one, I could save the project. But at any time, I can choose the Save Texture As option or Save All Textures. So if I do Save All Textures, it'll ask me a format. I want to save this as. There's my color. 
and here's going to be my bump. And so I can totally go into uh, Photoshop now, open those images up, and work on them. So here now is my bump channel and my color channel right inside of Photoshop. I can use uh, any of the tools here, save it, make any edits, open it up in Body Paint and Cinema 4D, and it's going to work great. So here I can just, for example, add a text layer to my color channel. Type in T-Rex. Adjust it here. And maybe use maybe something like stencil, bold. Maybe make it a little bit bigger, uh, maybe even a little bit bigger. And move that up here. Actually, it should probably be turned around. Like so. Go with that. Let's see how that looks. And maybe change the color. So if I save this, Go back to Cinema 4D, and revert texture to saved. It will now find that T-Rex, of course it's upside down, but it's going to find that last saved version of the file. And now here it is with the updates from Photoshop. So real cool stuff, really fluid back and forth between Cinema 4D and Photoshop and other image editing software. So this was hopefully just a good overview for you to see some of the painting options you have right within Cinema 4D. Especially looking at the projection painting is a super powerful tool that allows you to paint right inside the 3D model without the worries of UV issues and, and fixes that you may have to make. So be sure to check out the other body paint tutorials that we've got here and good luck painting.